Right, so it is still day 113 of my attempt to plant tree a tree every single day for 2023, and this is part two of my sort of fortnightly review, going around checking on how everything I've already planted is doing. In part one, nothing was significantly worse than it had previously been. We'd had a couple of things make a little bit of progress, but no major changes. This is generally going to be the order of the day for, for this time of year. Things will either decline if they've just gone in, or they will be in a holding position if they settled in and they're waiting for the weather to change up again. And a couple of species that are more temperate that are actually enjoying the winter as it gets a bit cooler, it's a bit more suitable for them for growing. Uh, but generally speaking, that is how things are. They're sort of settling down, uh, cooling off, and it's just propping up the things that are struggling, basically, is, is, is the order of the day. Uh, so let's see how part two is going. Starting off part two quite nicely, our little lychee tree is looking nice and good. These two tender leaves are good and healthy. And next up we have this little Dipsis decaria. Now this is one of the palm trees from Madagascar. This is sometimes called a triangle palm. It is from a rainforest area, but it's from a rainforest area in a subtropical climate. So it is actually going to be probably enjoying the sort of cooler but not wintry weather we have between the rainy season and winter proper so that might be why the central leaf has come up really well the last few weeks next up we have the first of our garstinias now these are the african mangosteens garstinia livingstoni um, and it is very much in its dormancy phase it did show some nice growth earlier in the season but it seems to have very much stopped for now as has its sibling the jackalberry that went in on the same day as them has not stopped. It does seem to have quite a few growth points still active. They're slightly pinker coloured, a little sort of conical tips in between some of its younger leaves. So it's really good to see that still going up. And our little Eugenia uniflora, which we saw a couple of seedlings of in part one, but this was actually a transplanted volunteer here. Um, and you can see it is actually finally losing these leaves. They're actually going brown where, where, when they're red. As these ones are, they're just in stress, but when they go brown like this, that is actually dying. Um, so it is dropping a lot of them, but its stems actually seem a little bit healthier in some ways. So I'm not too concerned yet. Uh, I will keep it watered, see if this perks up. It, it, a lot of these leaves won't perk up, but it might start putting out some new shoots soon with the way that it's feeling. It's a little bit less brittle feeling. And our Callistamon which is another myrtle, but from the opposite side of the planet, went in the same day as the Eugenia. Um, and this also is not feeling its best right now. Uh, it has got some leaves that are looking healthy, some of the older leaves, but the newer growth that it put in when it first went in here is mostly burning off, which isn't great. There are some young tender leaves still on here, and I think some of them might be relatively new. But it's not great that it seems to be dropping an awful lot off because usually these seem to be evergreen. Um, we'll keep an eye on this. Maybe it just needs a little bit more water because if it's the species of Callispin, I think it is. It is primarily riverine. Uh, so maybe one liter of water a week is not enough for it at the moment while it's settling in. Next up we have Alice, our Bauhinia petersiana, and as with the other more exposed Bauhinia petersiana, you can see she's definitely turning things off for the winter, so the growing points have just completely dried up. She's reabsorbed all the moisture, all the nutrition from there, and these little twigs will probably fall off in the next few days. Uh, so she's probably going to be going into dormancy phase. Certainly some of the lower leaves, you can see she's, she's reclaiming everything she can, and then she'll probably be closing up shop for winter. Her Dracaena, uh, which is a Dracaena studentary, which is here, which will eventually sort of support her because Bauhinia petersiana, unlike some of the Asian Bauhinias, does tend to sort of scramble as well as stand by itself, so it gets a lot taller if it has another tree to lean on. Uh, so this Dracaena will be fulfilling that purpose. Uh, but it is looking quite good, actually. It had suffered a little bit when it first went in. You can see some, some burning on the leaves, but generally speaking, the center is nice and green and seems quite vigorous. Next up, and starting a line of trees which have some sort of misnomer, we have a sand olive, which is sometimes also called wild hops. It's neither an olive nor hops. It is a relative of the Combretums, I think, so it has a papery little flower. It's Didonia viscosa. It's a beautiful little tree with a sort of olive-like growth form, but certainly not an olive-like fruit. But it's, it's looking pretty perky here. It's got a lot more leaves than it had when it went in. It has got some sunburn and it's got a few of its older leaves starting to yellow off and a little bit of insect damage, but I'd say generally it's pretty happy to be here. Our next misnamed tree is Prunus persica, which as I discussed in the planting is a Chinese tree. This is the peach, uh, which is very widely planted, but did originate in China. Uh, but it is seeming to enjoy the cooling down, so you've got a lovely tender little growth shoot coming up there. As we cool down, that should really make conditions better for it. 
Next up, our other little loquat was showing some more growth than this one. This one has actually lost its original growth point, but there's a new one coming up beneath it, so it looks like the one that was looking a little brown last week had actually been sunburned. But it looks like there's some more tender little leaves poking up just where that was, so that's really good to see. So this is Areobotria japonica, which, as with the peach, is sort of geographically misnamed. This is also a Chinese tree originally, or well, that has been grown in Japan for over a thousand years. And then our wild pear, Dombea, uh, Dombea rotundifolia, which is, as you might guess from, from the recurring theme here, no kind of pear at all. But it is a healthy little tree, so I'm happy with that. Next up we have Sirius rapandus, which is the Peruvian apple. Um, as you can probably guess, it's, it's not a true apple, it is actually a cactus. Uh, but it is growing nicely. There's some damage here, which I think is probably some old insect damage. It seems to have healed, so I'm not too worried. It's generally speaking, a nice texture. Its new growth is looking good and vigorous. Um, and so, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, and then we have the Kai apple, which is also misnamed. It's not a true apple at all. This is Dovialis, whereas apples are malice. As you can see, it's beautifully thorny, so it's quite malicious looking. Uh, it's actually quite fun because they don't usually produce thorns if they're grown from seed without any pruning. It will usually end up they're never pruned with branches more like this with few or no thorns at all as only when they get injured they start producing thorns to defend themselves which is quite a fantastic little system but it's it's looking healthy but it's not really done any growing which is more or less how it's been since it went in earlier this year and down in here we have something which I'm going to sort of misname because I'm going to call this one of the acacias and there's a little botanical quirk where acacia now only refers to Australian trees um, and this is an African tree. So this is Fedherbia albida, uh, which is an acacia by common name but not by Latin name anymore. But it is a lovely native tree. It actually spread throughout the Afrotropics all the way into the Middle East. Um, but it is coming up nicely. You can see lovely tender growth, no sign of sunburn, plenty of leaves. I'm really happy with that. I think I now have to end my little misnamed section because we are onto our fishtail palm, which is indeed a palm tree, so I can't really complain about the naming there. Um, it is reasonably healthy. There's not really much sign of change yet. I do think the central leaf has probably come up, but that's more out of experience with these trees than out of any obvious change. So we're going to watch it compared to that dot to begin with. So probably by the next review it will be well beyond that if it's healthy. Um, once it's settled in, it should quite quickly overtake this leaf, and then we'll be looking at the sort of node distances between where the leaf leaves attach at the base, which should be quite open quite quickly, because this is a very fast-growing, short-lived palm tree. Right, next up we have Citrus ex Jambiri, uh, which is one of the rough lemons. I could see yesterday, but I cannot see today the caterpillar that has done most of this, so I suspect a wasp might have carried him off. A lot of the wasps are active here at the moment. Um, but this was done by a citrus swallowtail, which is, while it is distressing to look at, is often quite a good one for stimulating new growth on citrus. They also eat a lot of the mature leaves that are in shade um, and sort of not you doing anything useful for the tree, so they are quite a good one to have around, although when the tree is this small it's obviously very distressing. He does seem to have stuck fairly well to the mature growth, although we do have on another young rough lemon some woolly bear damage which is going for the new growth as well, which is not very good. Um, but this one, I'm just waiting for it to show some regeneration because there is no new growth since it went in, which is kind of weird because these usually settle in pretty quickly. But hopefully as it cools down a little bit, it'll get a little bit easier for the leaves that are left and for the stems that are still green to do a little bit of photosynthesis and push out a little bit more in the way of leaves. We'll see. Its sibling, which had initially looked kind of less healthy, now looks somewhat more healthy because it still has all its leaves. It hadn't got the numbers of citrus swallowtail. It did have some caterpillars, I think. Um, and you can see there is some caterpillar damage around. Uh, some, some of this damage here is grasshoppers that are sort of nibbled in passing. They're not that interested in citrus, but they will test it and find that out. Um, but the... Uh, the bulk of the leaves that are close into the companion plants have been left more or less untouched, so I think it's possible the caterpillars wandered off and ate other things, and that's why this one didn't get so damaged. Uh, we'll see if it starts regenerating soon, because it also hasn't done anything much since it went in. And onto a tree that has done quite a lot, all the leaves you can see on this little Bauhinia variegata are new since it went in. It did get very badly sunburned and drop all its original leaves, and it has sprung up with some lovely new ones. They're still quite small. They don't seem to be expanding anymore, so I suspect they're going to stay small until it's a bit more settled in and can produce the full-size adult leaves. But it's good that it has leaves at all. There is a little bit of sun crinkling on one of the tender ones there. 
uh, but it generally speaking seems a lot healthier than it was when it first went in. And likewise its sibling. Down in here we have what I think is Washingtonia filifera. It was sold as cotton palm, so it's one of the Washingtonias, but hard to tell exactly when they're this little. Um, but it is looking reasonably healthy. The smaller leaves seem to be coming up quite well. The older leaf here has been the only one to get any real sunburn, so it was probably germinated in quite a shady spot. And so the rest are quite sun hardy, but that leaf isn't so much. These are a very hardy palm once established. So I'm looking forward to it expanding a little bit more and being a little bit more self-sufficient. This looks bleak. Uh, so this was an avocado, uh, so the Persia americana. And indeed it is still an avocado, there is still life in the stem down here. It's just everything above. Everything above about that point is just bone dead. And you can feel it gets warm, whereas below that it stays relatively cool. Partially that's because it's shaded by its companion plants, partially that's because it has a little bit more thermoregulation while it's alive than this completely dead stick up top does. Um, so I'm not going to take it off the list because there is still life down below and these will regenerate from the base quite readily, but I would love to see some regeneration actually happening because this is a little bit worrying right now. Its sibling, which had a much tougher life initially being undermined by ants and then being uh, hollowed out underneath by uh, bull rats, in fact it lost one of its companion plants to that, uh, is actually looking much, much better. Um, all these leaves are new since it went in, this is the only original, um, and they're a lovely colour, a lovely texture, they're hardening off slowly but pretty well, and there's some new leaves coming in the centre there, so I'm really happy with that. Down in here we have Perinari curatellifolia, which is an Mpundu tree. This was our second attempt, and so far it's the only one with any life still showing. Uh, I have had some of the ones I put in pots show some significant regeneration recently, so I'm hoping this new leaf sheath here will open up soon and let out some new leaves. Uh, but one way or another, I'm just happy that this is still alive, because this is another one that has been visited by the mole rats, and so I thought it might have been destroyed by that, but it seems to be hanging on in there, so I'm happy there. Right, next up we have uh, Citrus Maxima, which is the pomelo. Uh, this is probably also on rootstock of Citrus X Jumbiri, so relate this rough lemon again. Uh, it does have some damage here, but you can see the edge. This damage has sort of gone white and brown, which is an indication that it's old. I'm not actually seeing any new damage. So if this is damage that occurred after it went in, whatever did it isn't here anymore, or isn't active anymore, so that is fine. Um, so yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. I would like to see some growth, of course, uh, but just it not being demolished the way the others were is it's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Quite deep in the weeds here, which does seem to be the best place for them to be generally, we have a little tiny lychee seedling. This is Fenchurch. Uh, this is one of three trees that went in on the 42nd day of the year, so I thought a little reference to hitchhikers wouldn't go amiss. Uh, but she is looking nice and healthy, no sign of sunburn yet. She's a decent texture, she's a little fragile, but she's got some tender growth there, which is looking healthy. Um, so I'm generally happy with that. Here is Ford, her brother, showing the advantage of a little bit more shelter because he's significantly taller already. His tender growth has hardened off and there isn't a sign of anything more coming up yet, but he's looking nice and he's looking a good texture and a good color, so I'm really happy with that too. Their sibling Arthur, who is Articarpus heterophyllus, or jackfruit, is also looking in good health. It's not so vigorous at the tip, but there's a little bit of growth coming there, so this is actually a leaf sheath which could open up into some new leaves soon. But generally speaking, he's in a good state, and I'm happy with that. Next up we have a wild quinine, which is not true quinine, just to note that uh, true quinine is not from Africa. This is an African tree, this is a revolvia. Um, so it can be used medicinally for a lot of things, uh, but I wouldn't do that at home because it's a very, very toxic tree. Uh, but it is coming up nicely. It had lost almost all of its leaves, but you can see there's little growth tips coming up on most of its branches here, and some of them are opening out really well. So I'm really happy to see that looking a bit more vigorous than it was. And a much smaller Revolfia uh, that went in on the same day did show stress a lot faster, partially because it's smaller, partially because it's more exposed. Um, but it's recovering a lot faster too, so almost all of its original branches have regenerated the growth points and they've got lovely growth coming and some good healthy growth already there. And this is something I'm not pleased with. This seems to be a recurring theme with these trees at the moment. So the Cassimaroas had started to settle in, I thought, 
and the stem is still alive although it's not very happy it is a little dehydrated I would say um, almost feels like there's some root damage has happened here but the leaf is but the leaf has just completely burnt off and it's really not looking happy about life it's also not feeling great um, so I'm not sure how long this is going to stay on the lift. It's still nice and green in there. That's still a lively living stem, but it just really doesn't feel, doesn't feel good at all anywhere along there. And it's sibling. It's just completely dead on top. That's just a stick by now. Um, the further down the stem does feel a little bit, further down the stem does feel a little bit more alive. But again, it's not great. And if we scratch that, yeah, there's still green in there. It's still alive. It's just really not great. I don't know if this is a dormancy thing. All the ones I've planted previously are in much more sheltered spots. Uh, so they didn't really go dormant. Uh, so I might be overreacting a little bit here, but it is quite distressing to see. Perhaps most distressing, because it was showing the most regeneration, you can see the growing tips on this little one have also died right back. The stem below feels much, much healthier. It looks much healthier too but these, this young tender leaf that was coming up is just dead. The growing tip there is gone. And all the way up here is just a stick again. Uh, so that's a little bit dis disappointing for our Casimiros because they, they had looked like they might settle in quite quickly, but yeah, they, they, they are sulking at the moment. So we'll keep an eye. Um, they're still in decline in a couple of weeks, then we'll probably have to take them off the list. Now in here we have someone who is not in decline, but doesn't seem to be doing anything much either. There is the suggestion of a growing tip in the middle there, but this is Brachycesia spiciformis, which is the dominant tree of the Miombo woodland. Beautiful trees when matured, but are currently fairly inactive. Here we have another one. You can see this one's a little bit more exposed, and it is actually closing its leaves to conserve a little bit of water. This one did have some root damage going when it went in, so it might just be a little bit more inclined to water stress than the others. It's actually not on the list until this little growth point here decides it's going to do some growing because of that root damage. I want to see that it actually is fully alive before it gets counted. The first growth we're going to see from these Brachystegias, though, is probably going to be on this one because you can see right in the center there, a little orange cone, which does seem to have grown since two weeks ago when I last looked at it. Uh, not very fast, clearly, uh, but it might be opening up in some new leaves soon, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Whereas the growth point on this little mosakili, which is one of the mahoganies, uh, Trichelia emetica, uh, does seem to have just gone dormant entirely for this season, so probably not going to see any growth from this until it warms up again in September time. Next up we have one of our figs. Now this is still an unknown fig because it is quite a generic looking fig, and of the nearly 30 types of fig in the country it's quite hard to distinguish them just based on one this size. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but it seems reasonably healthy. It does seem to have gone dormant in most of its stems for the winter, but there's actually a little bit of green showing through in this central stem here. So hopefully that might be about to push out some new leaves. We'll have to see. We might also be getting some new leaves from this little mango because you can see right here in the center, this little conical growing tip seems to be pushing itself up and almost starting to separate and some of the early beginnings of leaves. So we might actually get some pre-winter growth there, which would be really good to see. And these are the little yellow points here are flowers forming on this little candelabra tree, Euphorbia ingens, uh, which is generally looking healthy. It would be nice if we could also see some motion from in here, this little red growing tip, if that could do some growing. But flowering is activity, and activity means it's not dead, so I'm happy with that. Around our little Euphorbia, we have some yuccas, and this one is actually starting to straighten up pretty well, I would say. I'm quite happy with that. This one is also starting to get a more upright posture, I think. It's looking pretty good. And this one is still very much drooped over. As with our Moringa in part one, our Moringa in part two is also looking like it is not really planning on holding onto its leaves at this time of year. So it has really dropped most of them already. You know, it's just the newest leaves it's still holding onto for a little bit, but it doesn't seem like it'll be doing that for long. But this is a very deciduous tree, so it shouldn't be too worrying. Whereas this is one of the few trees you can expect to go from bare to leafy at this time of year, and indeed it does seem to be pushing out some new growth. So this is a little winter thorn, Fetovia albida, and it's looking pretty good. Next up we have Delanix regia, which is the flamboyant, which is a Madagascan tree, which has fantastic flowers and is quite a wonderful spreading shade tree. It is coming up really nicely, despite the heat, it's still pushing out some new leaves. This is a deciduous tree, so it will drop these, but usually that'll happen when it gets hotter, rather than just when it starts getting cold. So I'm quite pleased to see how well this is coming up. 
Right, so this is one of the pink mangoes. Uh, so this is a sort of pink ivory or peach variety of Mangifera indica. It is quite a lovely mango, but the tree is starting to suffer a little bit from this heat. Uh, the UV has been quite high at the moment. It, it hasn't burned, which one of the other ones has done. Uh, and it's quite unusual for mangoes to burn at all, usually, unless they're really sharply moved from deep shade to full sun. But it's looking a little bit stressed, so you can see a little bit of waviness along some of these younger leaves. And this leaf is very, very dark for a young one. Usually they are nice and red, but they don't usually go this dark, so that probably means it's trying to protect itself from that heat. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with how this is holding up. Next up, we have a healthy little malina tree, which is lovely and bushy at the top there. And down here, we have some nice tender leaves on this little bridelia or stinkwood, and you've actually got some more growth coming along here, so I'm really pleased with that. Another healthy malina, and another regenerating bridelia. A slightly more stressed malina. This one actually does have some ants uh, hollowing out around its base, but it seems to be holding up pretty well considering that. It's actually got some new growth coming up around the base since that happened. So I don't think it's too trouble, just had a little bit of root stress when that first started happening. And our Bridelia that was least stressed by the transplanting seems to be holding up pretty well. And we have another happy bushy little Malina. The last of these Bridelias, again, it's got some nice leaves coming up, so I'm really pleased with that. And our last Malina, which has been the most stressed, is finally showing some growth, so I'm really pleased with that. Next up, we have a Jacaranda, who showed some really nice growth when they first went in. Um, and they do have some tender growth coming up right up in the middle there, so nice and sort of maroon coloured, so I'm happy with that. And last time I mentioned that it looked like we were about to get some new growth on this little Spethodia, and here it is, some lovely, tender, slightly hairy little new leaves, beautiful and lovely to see that coming up so well. And down in here we have Hope, our little Thespesia Garthiana, or tree hibiscus, and she's coming up really nicely. So these two new leaves are new since you went in there, is a little growth point starting to poke up in the middle there, so we might get some more of these before winter really sets in. Another happy little jacaranda, and another. And a phoenix, which is looking a little pale, but seems reasonably firm. I'm reasonably happy. Then onto our first line of maligners, and this one is looking really well settled in, as is this one, and this one, and this one. <laughs> And finally this one, all looking really good, I would say. A little bit of drying off. These will lose their leaves as we go into winter, uh, but it's good that they've put in so much growth beforehand. And another tree that is losing its leaves for winter, this is our little ghost tree, Stoculia uh, quinquilobata. It is holding on to its last two young leaves. Even one of its older young leaves since it went in is starting to die back. But you can see it's dropped most of its leaves and it's starting to shed this juvenile bark down here to show that wonderful white bark that gives it its name. Um, but yeah, beautiful little tree. Hopefully it'll be springing back once it warms up again, sort of September, October time. And in with it are three little pachiris, and this one is healthy, as is this one with some tender new growth. And this one, in a slightly more sheltered spot, seems to be pushing out another leaf as well. And then we have our, our Fica salicifolia, which literally would mean willow leaf fig, but it's usually called the Wonderboom fig. And you can see, even since it's gone in, just the other day, it is pushing up a lovely new tender green leaf there, so that's really good to see. Onto our line of Pachiris, and this is probably fairly representative, although this is one of the larger ones, of how these are going to look. So they're going to be slowing their growth in the centres, with a little bit of yellowing, and uh, generally speaking, weathering the storm pretty well, just showing a little bit of discolouring from the sunlight coming up. So this one's slightly less yellowed. This one similarly yellowed to the first one, and not as badly, but yeah, certainly some sun stress, but nothing too serious. So our tamarind, which is a fairly deciduous tree, does seem to have decided to act upon that, so this does seem to have dropped a few of its leaves. Still got quite a few holding on, and these do open up in the early morning to get some work done. Uh, it's just, at the moment, it's too hot, so it's decided to close them up to save some water. Uh, but it should be opening up again tomorrow, and for the next few weeks it'll keep a few of these as it drops the rest uh, for winter. A small bit happy Pachira glabra, and a slightly more stressed but generally healthy Pachira glabra, and an astonishingly vigorous Pachira glabra considering how exposed this one is, but nice tender growth there. Now this is the one I accidentally skipped past last week, but you can see it's in reasonable health. There's a little bit of sunburn, but a nice tenderish leaf there that isn't fully sized yet, um, and a healthy little growth point, although it's not doing anything currently. And another one enjoying a little bit more shelter, and same again. And we have our little Pachira CF Aquatica, which is almost certainly another Pachira glabra, but they're often mislabeled. Um, and this one has a nice little leaf there. It's a little bit curled, but it does seem to be coming up well. And this little one is a little bit sun-bleached, but otherwise perfectly healthy. 
which is also true of this one, I would say. Right, and now we are onto our bamboos, which means we're into the final, final stretch. So this is Bamboosa vulgaris. It's looking pretty healthy, I would say. It's lost a few leaves as it's dried out a bit. Um, no action from the base yet, but a nice healthy stem. And for the first time, this is not our final tree in the review. So this is another Bambusa vulgaris, um, and it is again looking nice and healthy. This has held onto more of its leaves because it's in a more shaded spot, and it's seeming a little bit more tender still, and a little bit more active still because of that shelter. Again, there doesn't seem to be anything new coming up from the base, uh, but that shouldn't be for a while anyway. And our new final girl, who I'm going to be calling Sydney, is another bamboo, but she is a seedling, and I'm hoping she's a seedling of Dendrocalamus, although I'm really not sure. Uh, she was sold as a giant bamboo, but she's holding up pretty well to her first day in full sun, and I'm happy with that. Right, so that should be everything for today. Overall, I would say this week has gone a little bit better than uh, two weeks ago when I did, last did a review, uh, because we haven't actually had to take anything off the list this week. There are four things that look like they might, uh, so the three Casimiroas and one of the avocados, all looking not great. Um, but overall, most things, apart from a little bit of insect damage in both part one and part two, that does make things look worse than they actually are, in my opinion. Some things are actually looking better than I was expecting, like the, the new growth on the Spithodia is really nice to see. Uh, the Malinas are holding onto their leaves a little later than they might have done, considering how dry it's been. Um, so all of those things are good things, um, and I'm happy with that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, I'm astonished that you made it this far into the video. Well done. Uh, have a gold star. Um, and if you do want to tune in again tomorrow or yesterday or the day before that or the day before that for the tree that went in today and every other day, uh, please do that. Uh, thank you very much.